Hades and Persephone, one of the most well-known tales from Greek mythology, is a symbolic story of the perennial change between life and death, representing the origin of the seasonal cycle as we know it today. It is a story that establishes the relationship of one of the most fascinating couples in Greek mythology that ultimately go on to provide us with many amazing legends. But how did it all begin? Let's find out together right now. Hades, Lord of the Underworld, was renowned for his tendency to pretty much stay in his kingdom, minding his own business and ruling as he saw fit. It was on one of his rare excursions to the surface of the earth, however, that he came across the maiden Persephone and fell, as is often the case in Greek mythology, immediately in love, determining that she would be his wife. Persephone just so happened to be the only daughter of Zeus and the goddess of agriculture, Demeter. She was a beautiful and innocent girl, content to wander through the flowery meadows where eternal springtime reigned. The complete opposite, you could say, of the lord of the underworld. But this did not deter Hades, and as soon as he was able to tear his eyes away from Persephone, he travelled immediately to see his brother Zeus. He asked the permission of Zeus to take Persephone as his wife. His brother consented, or at least refused to oppose it, but left Hades with a warning that the girl's mother, Demeter, would not be so agreeable. Deciding to skip the usual process of courtship in the knowledge that the sunless halls of the underworld would probably not appeal particularly to the goddess of flowers, Hades instead resolved to abduct Persephone. As she gathered flowers one day on the plains of Sicily, the ground opened up suddenly beside her, and out of the chasm appeared Hades, thundering across the ground upon his mighty four-horse chariot. Before she had a chance to react, the god swooped her up into his arms and rode back down to the underworld, the deep hole sealing behind them, leaving only a scattering of fallen blossoms as a clue to what had occurred. Before long, Demeter arrived to collect her daughter, but could find no trace of Persephone. Distraught and desperate, she searched frantically, but to no avail. Travelling to the corners of the earth, she spent nine full days and nights with no moment of rest, seeking her lost child. On the tenth day, she came across the goddess Hecate, who told Demeter that Persephone had been abducted, but she did not know the identity of the culprit. They went together to visit Helios, the sun god, who saw everything that happened on Earth. He revealed to Demeter that Hades had taken her daughter, whilst at the same time trying to convince the distraught mother that Hades, as a brother of Zeus and ruler of one-third of the universe, was not such an unfit husband for Persephone. Demeter was not convinced, however, and flew into a rage upon hearing the news. Furious at the apparent complicity of Zeus, she refused to return to Mount Olympus, and instead roam the earth in the guise of a mortal, forbidding the trees to bear fruit and the crops to grow, bringing forth a great famine that threatened all of mankind. A full year passed as the world around her deteriorated into a barren wasteland, and the people's suffering grew worse and worse. The rage of Demeter did not subside, however, and Zeus was eventually forced to act, lest all his worshippers perish. He sent a host of different gods and goddesses to Demeter to beg her to return to Olympus and cease her desperate crusade, allowing the earth to heal, but she refused, determined to continue until her daughter was returned to her. In the end, Zeus had no choice but to give in to her demand and promised to bring Persephone back to her mother. Hermes was tasked with racing down to Hades and reclaiming Persephone. Surprisingly, Hades appeared unmoved and agreed to release her without a fight. Often it is the case that when things seem too good to be true, that is exactly what they are. And before leaving, Hades urged Persephone to eat a single pomegranate seed as a parting gift. Having refused to eat in her entire time in the underworld, whether from sorrow, fear or stubbornness, Persephone was starving and was finally unable to resist appeasing her terrible hunger. In that moment, she unwittingly sealed her own fate and set in motion a cycle that would persist for the rest of time. For you see, anyone who tastes the food of Hades must remain in the underworld, with no going back and the situation now at an impasse. Rhea, the mother of Zeus, Demeter and Hades, proposed a compromise that all her children reluctantly accepted. 
Persephone would spend half the year in the underworld with Hades, and the other half above ground with her mother. Returning to the surface initially, the fertility of the earth was restored immediately, but when the time came for Persephone to return to the underworld, the land became cold and less fertile. As such, the seasonal cycle of the planet was begun. Persephone would go on to become best known as the dreaded goddess of the underworld, feared by mortals. A far cry from her image as an innocent maiden at the beginning of the myth. She personified the perennial change between life and death, her very nature shifting in tandem with the land that she so loved as a child. As time progressed, the relationship between Persephone and Hades would grow stronger becoming something very real and very powerful despite its controversial origins and providing many more fascinating myths for us to enjoy and explore together. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great stories. Cheers.